Hello everyone, welcome to Preface Nomad Junior. I'm Mr. Mark and today this is a scratch tutorial on how to create condition specific games with a little help from all my students. This game is called Space Adventure. The astronaut has to dodge the aliens and touch the spaceship to win. You can control the astronaut with the arrow buttons on the keyboard such like up, down, left, right. The word, then the word congratulations will pop up. You can push the green flag to start the game again. All right, thank you, Alvin, for the very detailed introduction. So, you know, let's just get right into it. So make sure you load in into Scratch and then we will create our project. So, before we begin, one thing I want to bring up is that, you know, today's project is actually relatively simple. And by now, if you followed our YouTube videos up to now, you would have a pretty basic grasp of the Scratch interface, right? So today's project, I'm not really going to harp on choosing particular sprites or backgrounds. And rather, you guys can feel free to really use your creative juices to make a very similar project. So perhaps with different sprites, but as long as they do the same things and work in the same manner and have the same behavior, that's completely fine. So, you know, for me, actually, I, I feel like doing that today too. So perhaps we're not really going to just do space adventure. I can show you a different mode where it's underwater, but, you know, the sprites do the exact same thing too. And, and they, they behave in the exact same manner. So we're going to have underwater adventure today. And so an underwater adventure, remember to name it with your name too. And we're going to begin. So let's look for backdrops first. So we might not need that cat. Let's just delete it. And let's look for backdrops for underwater. So, you know, there's one here that's underwater and there's one here that's also underwater, but one that's more cartoony. Um, let's just go for that one for now. And then... If you remember from Alvin's introduction, uh, he showed how the congratulations words, they pop out when it's complete, right? When we finish the game. So what we can do here is that you can make this in your own mind. So do you think if this, do you think this is a sprite or do you think this part is a backdrop? So either way, up to you, you can, you can try create it in your own way. You're going to change it as a backdrop but that doesn't mean uh, changing as a sprite is wrong too. So over here, I'm just going to duplicate my backdrop into a second one, and I'm going to change my color to maybe a white one, and I'm going to make my text, you know, say congratulations. I can change it into a font I want and make it as big or small as I want, so that's completely up to you. You know, just customize in your own way. And once you're done, we're going to get our sprites. So you need to start off with a lead character, right? So that's going to be your hero. So in the project that we saw just now, it was an astronaut. So for this one, if it's underwater, it can be something underwater. So see what hero we can get. Maybe not a basketball player. You can if you want. Alright, so we see the two different divers here that we can use. So I can guess I can pick just one here and maybe resize it too to maybe 60. Let's first try. So, and then I can get my enemies or opponents in which I can go to my sprites again. So there's a really a range of things you can choose from. So I think, you know, underwater octopus might do and also, you know, maybe a shark could do too and this part remember these parts are entirely up to you you can do it in your own way and when we get them we're just going to resize them so i made these two as 50 or you can make it bigger as 60 too and so just make sure that they're sized so that it's so that when they move around it's not too hard to go through but at the same time it does pose some difficulty so 50 or 60, the size is um, all up to you guys. Um, just make sure that it works. And finally, we need the outlet rocket over there. So the rocket was like the escape 
uh, machine that we needed. So over here, let's just try to look for some boats or submarines. Mm, no submarines. Oh, what about boats? With sailboats. You know, so not really much underwater things to our liking. So I guess you can just go, you can go crazy. I mean, there isn't anything wrong with you know getting a rocket ship, right? You can still use a rocket ship if you want. Once again, resize it. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Alright, now we can begin our coding. So I want to begin the project by taking a look at the original one. So if you see from the space adventure, we start off with everything relatively in the middle and then they gradually drift towards the edges and bounce off them. We see that for each of these sprites that are moving up and down, there really isn't much direction change. It's purely only moving in a straight line up and down. As for our hero here, uh, as mentioned by Alvin earlier in the introduction, it moves using the up, down, left, right key arrows. And when it hits different aliens, it is going to go back to its original position. So to know this original position is important and we also need to control these aliens in a way that they only go up and down as well as the rocket ship too. So to start off with you could see uh, that there's still a word congratulations here so we have to ensure that when the game first starts, we have to make sure that it's just a plain background. So we need to click into the background area and we need to make sure that it starts off as the plain background at the beginning. So we need to switch the backdrop back to Underwater 1. And then next up, save it first. And then we are going to work on the diver. So the diver, remember it always goes back to its original position whenever it touches one of the one of the octopus or the shark. So we need to make sure that it has to go back all the way to the left. So it's important that we remember this coordinate. It would be one minus one eight seven and minus thirteen. So you can make that to zero two if you want. It's just to make in the middle. And then you can call it to go to this position whenever it begins. We're going to continue by exploring how each of these sprites move. So if you remember, it's actually only the character here, the hero that we control, that doesn't move in a vertical line. So for the hero, it moves according to how the player chooses it to. So for the diver, if you remember from Alvin's introduction, he moves up, down, left, right, and arrow keys, right? So over here, we're going to get the one space he pressed. We're going to start off by making the up arrow. When the up arrow key is pressed, I actually want the diver to move upwards. So if you can see here, when I change the Y from 0 to 10, as in positively, it moves up a bit. So that's why I know that by changing the Y, I can change how high or low it goes. So obviously, I want to go up, right? So I change Y positively by 10. And if I want to go down, I can change Y negatively by 10. So apart from dragging it, once again, there's actually a quick way of doing this. So you can actually duplicate this block. And duplicating means that I can make a complete copy of this. So all to do is that I will have to right click on the top event handler part here. And I can just call duplicate. And you can see an extra block appears here. I will change this to the down arrow. And I will change the motion block below to minus 10 instead. So now when I press the up button, it goes up. And when I press the down button, it goes down. And I do the exact same for the left and right. So the left and right is a bit different because this time they changed the X. So I grab the change X by 10. And then I grab the event handler for when, for when the right arrow is pressed. Now for the left arrow, I duplicate this block. And then I just change it to minus 10 over here. I'm going to change it back to left arrow and you're good to go. So now our diver is capable of moving up, down, left and right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the rest of the sprites. So I say rest because they all kind of behave in the same way. They all move around within the same vertical line. So the octopus doesn't really move left or right, just up and down. Same as the shark and the rocket ship. 
Now what really does differ is the speed at which they move in. So you can see at the rocket ship and the first barrier, they move at a more similar slow pace, while the second one moves at a much quicker pace, right? We can emulate this in our own project. So we can begin with the octopus. We can make it move to a more central position first. And one key thing here is that you really want to space out these characters to make sure that they're not bunched up together. Because if they're bunched up, then the whole game becomes... It depends. You can claim it's more easy or more difficult. but Or, you know, it can be a variation too. You can make one where they all are within one line. But for now, we'll just keep it more... We'll keep it more spread out. Now, for the octopus, I want to start in a more central area. So perhaps, like, minus 60 over here would do. So maybe minus 60, 28. Yeah, that's completely fine. Next, we really want to move the octopus in an up and down line, right? So if we look back in the original project, we could see that in the first barrier, they it seemingly glides to the top and then back down. So on the surface, this really looks like the this really looks like it goes to an edge and bounces, but I'm going to show you why that's not the case. So the first thing is that if we do it like we did in Pong, so we can make a forever block. And then we can and then we can also make it move 10 steps and then make it bounce on the edge, right? So that's what we did last time. So the first thing you realize here is that the octopus moves a different direction. So it, that's not what we want. So you can argue that we can just change its direction to make it point. We can point point in direction 90 in the beginning here first, and then we can and then we can make it continue. But the problem that happens here, sorry, so I should change this to zero actually. All right, now the problem of the problem here is that you can see that the octopus. So if you like it that way, it works too. But if you prefer the octopus to be upright, this really won't be the way to go. So the blocks that were chosen in the project, the original project, it was actually using the glides. So what they did was that they made it glide one second. In order to make sure that the octopus maintained to be on the same line, they made the x the exact same. So the x never changes, rather it's the y. So it goes to the highest point here. The highest point here is minus 150. I'm just going to make a change to a proper direction before so it turns back upright. 130 seems like the highest it can go over here. And the lowest I would say it's probably, you know, minus 130. So let's see how it turns out. And right now this seems a bit fast, right? It's almost like the same speed as the second one. So this should be like the speed of the shark. So what we can do here is that we can make it slower. So we can make it glide there in two seconds instead. So obviously for your game, you can make it hard too. You can even make it glide, you know, in like 0 0.8 seconds too, if you feel like you want to make some customizations and make it more fun. But for now, we'll just keep at two. And if you really want to make some changes, Feel free to do so yourself. And this is the part where I really want to explore. So as you can tell, all these characters, they move up and down in the same vertical line, right? As mentioned quite a lot of times earlier. So what we really want to do is that we want to put all these codes together back into the same characters. The problem is that to do so, we're to do the same thing over again, which is kind of repetitive, right? So just now we learned how to duplicate and make the same blocks or relatively the same block structure for the same sprites. So that's why we got the up arrow key press and the down arrow key press. We have a very similar block structure here which we can use. And we can actually do the same thing for different sprites. So what we do here is that we can, let's stop it first. We can drag this whole block into another sprite. Now notice how the shark is kind of bouncing around. This signifies that it's ready to be dropped in. And right now, once if you go into the shark, you'll realize that the duplication is successful and the shark has the same codes as the octopus. Now make sure these codes aren't entirely the same because I'll show you what happens here. If you make them the same, when the green flies click, they will go to the exact same position and move the same way. That's not what you want. So over here for my shark, I want to make a bit of changes. So I want to go possibly at, you know, 50, start at a bit lower. So 50 minus 40 might do. And then I'm going to make it glide to 
within the same X position because I want to keep it in a straight line. And once again, it's probably 130 minus 30. I'm going just to see whether it works. Yep, so it works completely fine. So I can change the speed up over here too to make the shark faster, like I did in the previous project. And then change the glides. And now we have the complete motion where we have the rocket and the octopus moving up and down. You can always feel free to change it up. So if you feel like the octopus and the rocket ship are moving too alike, you can change this also to something else, or you could also change the speed to 1.5. So this is all up to you. This is all up to your own creation. So feel free to always make the make different changes to your codes. You just need to remember the basic structure behind them and it's completely fine. We're going to move on to probably one of the more important parts, which is what happens to the diver when it collides with these sprites? So, remember if the diver collides with the sprites in the middle, namely the octopus and the shark, what will happen is that it will go back to its original position. But if it hits the spaceship, that signifies that the game is over because we have won the game. So we're actually going to explore something that we have previously touched upon in previous Scratch tutorials on the YouTube Preface Nomad Junior channel. And that is the use of some block and controls called if then and forever. So remember, these are control blocks. I want to go a bit more in depth of what if then does today. So what if then can do is that it categorizes different actions to happen for different conditions. And it's exactly what's happening here. Because whenever the diver hits the octopus or it hits the shark, it must go back to its original position. But if it hits the rocket ship, then we basically win the game. So you can see that different outcomes happen when we hit different things. So for the first one, let's just see what happens if we hit the octopus. So that would be, we need to make it go back to its original position. And therefore we go to sensing and we get the touching block. And then we, we allow it to be changed to octopus. So, when the diver touches the octopus, it will go back to its original position. So we need to get the original position here, which is minus 1870, as seen here under when green flag clicked. And the same thing happens when we hit the shark too, right? So we also do this and then we put it with the shark. And the final one is a bit different. So remember, when it hits the rocket ship, it supposedly goes to the congratulations page. So what changes here is actually the background. So we get another if then, and we get a touching once again. This time it's for a touching rocket ship. And this time we change the background, right? So we have to go to looks and we have to find switch backdrop to underwater two. Let's see in full effect. Yeah, so if I touch the octopus, I go back to original position. If I touch the shark, it goes back to its original position, and let's see if we can get to the rocket ship. Apparently not. One eternity later. Ah. One eternity later. So I've come to realize that I'm probably a pretty bad gamer because I'm literally unable to win my own game, and that's all right because what I can really do is that. I can make changes to my codes, right? So as mentioned earlier, always look to improve your codes. And for me, it's a way too cheap for the game too. So I'm just going to make everything from 10 and minus 10 to 20 and minus 20 so I can move at a greater scale. And hopefully that would help me, you know? So I can go through. Oh, still can't win apparently. One eternity later. Yep. And finally we made it through. The congratulation appears. So this is mess this is a message not that I'm bad at gaming hopefully, but really that you can always keep editing and improving on your codes. So let's have a brief recap of what we've learned for today. Uh, we've learned about the if then block. So remember with the if then block we can really separate different actions that happen for different conditions. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the project. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up with our daily content. I'm Mr. Mark and this is Scratch Tutorials on Preface Nomad Junior.